stitchy friends welcome to cross my stitches my name is jackie and today is january 3rd 2021 happy new year to everyone i know i have been mia for quite some time now and i do apologize for that i decided to crawl out from underneath that rock i was hiding in or hiding under and come out and show you my 2020 finishes so i'm so excited that I had 27 finishes for the year 2020. And that's pretty much an average for me. I have been averaging from 25 to 30 each year. And 2019, I did 25, so I have 27. So I got a little bit more done than I got last year, but I'm glad to have it. And I thought I would share with you each of the designs that I finished. Unfortunately, most of them are just FOs finished objects instead of FFOs, which are fully finished objects, but I do have a couple of fully finished objects that I'm excited to share with you. If you haven't been following me throughout the entire year, then these will be new for you to be able to see. And those of you that have been hanging around since the beginning, you're just going to do a recap with me or you can go to the next video when I film it. So let's get started. It was a tough year for 2020. I know everyone was struggling. I know I was struggling. Um, dealing with the pandemic, dealing with wearing, having to wear masks when I went back to work in February and having to deal with um, the craziness that the retail environment became in 2020, especially in the community that I'm in, where um, if you don't know, I worked for Walmart uh, when I came, went back to work in February of 2020. I went to Walmart because when we came back into Somerset, Kentucky, there weren't much in the way of jobs that paid decent. So ended up going to Walmart and right at the beginning when the pandemic was just starting is when I started work. And the first few months was just crazy with everything shutting down and people just flooding the stores. And then they started the mask mandates. Sorry, you're seeing my ring light. I'm trying to keep my eyes down so you don't have to look at my ring light. Um, so the mask mandate and having to deal with that, I have health issues. So wearing a mask, mask was impossible for me. So I had to go and get an exception, you know, go to the doctor, get notes, say I can't wear it. I wear a shield now, which is just the flexi type flexible shields that go over so I can breathe and just trying to behave myself and get stitching done and work and stitch and work and stitch. So it, it was not easy. It's not easy. And it's not over for any of us yet, but it's getting there. It is getting there. Shots are now available and hopefully we can knock this thing out and have a wonderful 2021. So um, instead of just rambling on, let me show you what I got. So um, I'm going to run it down from the time when I finished them, January through December, give you as much information as I can on each pattern. Uh, if I don't have the information, then I certainly will try to post it either, you know, with when I'm showing it or in the notes below. And let's get started. So my first finish for 2020 was Glendon Place Stand for Freedom. This was a market release, I believe, in 2018 and I actually started this in 2018. It came as a kit. It was a limited edition. You had to order it before market even came out and I did it with all the kit items It came it was stitched on 28 count bramble and it uses sulky threads it's one of the I think it's one of the first times that I had seen sulky threads being used in cross stitch so and on this is mine so it is finished it is a 30 what did I say 28 count bramble and there's the finish. And of course, it doesn't have the buttons on it because I don't like to put the buttons until after when I'm ready to frame it so that they're not poking anything else that's laying with this. So really happy the way this turned out. Love the, the shading of the silky threads. It was really lots of fun to complete. It did take me quite a while to get it completed because I started it in May 14th of 2018 and it sat until January 13th of 2020 for me to get it done, but I'm glad it's done. And now I need to go hunt for the frame, figure out what frame I'm going to put it in. They have this one here. And I know I can order that frame through, um, what is the name? Um, there's a framing store in Ocala, Florida, Cindy Dunlop. 
has a framing next to the Brick City cross stitch. And I've contacted her before. She said she could get that frame. I don't know if that's true or not. I may have to find out. Or I may decide to do something else with it. But I definitely need to get it framed. The next one is out of this book. It is Sister Suffragette. And it is Summer House Stitch Works. And I did the pin right here, which is the little pennant. That is the Vote USA. And it was lots of fun to stitch and it actually stitched up pretty quick. I started it and I'm looking down at my notes because I can't remember all this. I started it on January 14, 2020 and I finished it on January 17th. So it didn't take that long and I actually got this fully finished. So there it is. And I finished it just like they did. I put some um, trim around it as you can see here. And then these are ribbons that are cut up. On mine, I put felt on the back and then this has a magnet underneath. It has a washer. Okay, so I put a washer underneath. You can see the circle there. And I have a magnet. And if I want to wear it, I can wear it and just pin it to my clothes. But there it is. Love how it came out. I really wanted to do the complete set of these. I had a plan in my head on how I wanted to do all the pins and how I was going to finish them. But... I've only gotten one done so far, so one is better than none. Uh, the next item, and that was stitched on a 32 count even weave to get that size. So, so I think that was a good size. You can see it's pretty good size. I like it that size, so I'll do the rest of them in that size. The next item I did is part of a series, and I'm counting these as individual stitches instead of the whole series, because the whole series is on one piece of fabric, but I'm doing them as individual finishes. This one is the Early Americans. This is being stitched on 32 count sand, and I believe it's Lugana. I love this fabric because it never holds wrinkles. It's really awesome. I mean, I've had this thing folded up now. You can see the, the fold line in it because it's been folded up for months. But actually, it, it irons out so easy. And when I use a hoop with this, it really doesn't retain the shape of the hoop at all. So I really love it. Um, the, I finished the fourth one, which is Nathan Hale out of the Early American series. I really need to get more than one a year done on these, okay? I need to get this done by the end of the year. I really want to get this hung up. So I'm going to try to spend a little more time. I'm not going to promise anything because every time I make a promise or I say I'm going to do something, I don't do it. Okay, I feel the need to defy myself. So I'm not going to say I'm going to do it. But I want to get more of these done. So I'm now also using Vonna Pfeiffer's border. This is the border that she designed for this piece. You can see there's the, the pennants across the time or the buntings and then it's got stars running down. This is where I'm at with the entire series right now. And there is Nathan Hale. So I got him done. So he was started December 29th, 2019, and he was finished January 20th, 2020. So definitely got to pull this piece out and get the rest of those done. They don't take that long to do. They take about a week, so I really need to focus and get that done. My next finish is Swirly Birds. Now this was a pattern that was a kit. And I think it was um, Circle of Friends was the kit. And I borrowed it from Jen Upton. She had let me borrow the pattern and to stitch this up. And I ended up um, dyeing my own fabric and choosing my own threads for this. So I sent her back the rest of the kit so she could do it as well. And this is on 32 count linen that I hand dyed myself. And I know that the color of this linen is not going to be right because it's like a reddish grape color and it's showing more purpley. But that's it right there. Now I started this on February 2nd, 2020. I finished it on February 6th. And absolutely love it. It's supposed to be made into a drum. It has... Some felt that goes, not felt, wool that goes on the top of the bomb. So I really need to get my button gear and get this made into a drum because it is so stinking cute. So I love that. Thank you again, Jen Epton, for sharing that pattern with me. 
The next one is Christmas Kitten Mitten. Now this was from the Cricut Collection. It was a freebie on their website. I don't think you can get it there anymore. Uh, I did collect many of these mitten patterns and I also did a video. If you go back into my, my videos, you will see one that says Wayback Machine and it will show you how to get these old patterns, these old freebies from the Cricut Collection and from other um, designers that had patterns that are no longer on their website. So you can go back and look for that and it says Wayback Machine. But this is the finish, because I don't have a picture of it before. And there's my mitten and it's Christmas Kitten Mitten. And it's got the hanger. This is the back of the fabric. And what I love is it actually is a mitten. So I've made it into an actual mitten with a hole. And that hung on my tree this year and I really loved looking at it. Every time I looked up there and saw it, I said, I have to get more of these done. I have to get more of these done. I have two of them done. This is the, the only one that I have FFO'd. I have another one to show you, but absolutely love these. So that was completed. 2007 to 2000, 2007. February 7, 2020 to February 9. So it took me two days to stitch those up. Doesn't take long at all. I really need to get more done. The next piece is a Lizzie Kate freebie that came out in February of 2020 and it's called Valentine. There it is. Oh, excuse me. <coughs> it is stitched on a 32 count mystery linen. And I had every intention of getting this made into a heart and it didn't happen. So, but this year I really, I want to get it done. I want to get it into a heart before Valentine's Day. I'm leaving all these FOs on my desk and I'm not putting them away until I work on some of them and get them finished. But this is just too cute. It really is. And it was such a quick little stitch. I did it February 13th. I started and finished it the same day. My next finish is Cedar Wax Wings, which is Crossed Wing Collection. This is my first time stitching one of their patterns. I've been collecting their patterns for the last few years, and this is the first one that I have finished, and I am hooked on these. There is a Crossed Wing Collection um, Facebook group for people that are interested in these patterns, and they're very fun and interactive to be on it and see everybody's progress work, and it really encourages you to pull out these patterns and work on them. So this is mine, and I finished this. Let's see, I started it in February 19, 2019, and I finished it March 23rd, 2020, and here's mine. And this is the one pattern, or the one finish, that I got some Hobby Lobby uh, gift certificates, gift cards this year for Christmas. And I'm taking those over to Hobby Lobby with this and I'm getting this framed. It is spectacular. I love the realistic look of the birds. Look at the eyes. I mean, their eyes are awesome the way they're done. It's just a beautiful, beautiful piece. This is stitched on 36 count flax linen. And I am excited to go take this over and get it framed. And those, most of, everything that I've shown you so far, I think is what the call for, except for swirly birds. Um, my next one is Welcome Spring. This is from the Drawn Thread. And I have an idea with these. I have several of these patterns and I wanted to do them up because the word welcome is on every single one of them. So they're all going to come out. If you do them on the same size linen or the same size Ada or even weave, they're all going to come out the same size. You can use one frame. I want to get one of those thick molded frames. And then I want to just switch them out in the frame and keep all the extras behind the first, the front one. So they're all in that frame and I could just pop them out and switch them as the seasons or the, the holiday comes. It'll be perfect. I just got to find the frame with a thick molding to um, frame them with. So as soon as I find that, I'm going to do this. And I like this one because this one, I like that the mold, the frame looks like the mat and the frame too so i may try to find something like that a very thick frame and then deep frame so i can keep them stored all inside of it which would be awesome but i did this on a 28 count linen i don't know the name of it and i did this all in silks 
So these are all dinky dyes or silks for you silks. And there it is. Love this piece just so. I'm trying to get it pulled up there. So cute. And it there it is a, a fairly quick quick stitch. Like I said, what did I do? I did it on 12-2 to 3-23-20. So I started on February 12th. I ended it on March 23rd. So a month. And I'm sure I didn't work on it all the time. So just to, just love that. I need to look for that frame for that. My next finish is a Lizzie Kate. It is, and I don't have, I should have the pattern where, there it is. It is called Do As Your Wife, Do What Your Wife Said. <laughs> So I thought my husband would get a kick out of that. I can't remember if I showed him this or not. I need to get it framed and give it to him. So as a gift, I think he'll laugh. And this was stitched on a, this is, this is Weigert fabric. So it's got to be like a Lugana. It looks like a, um, like a sand Lugana or something. 32 count probably. Still has a needle stuck in it. I'm wondering where all my needles are now I know. So I'm gonna put that up there on my computer. And this is how it looks. And this was a car stitch for me for a while. I'd stitch on lunch times. So this is what I would stitch on. So, and I did choose my own colors for this. I think I changed out because they wanted, let's see. I don't think I used the same colors they did. No, I did. I might have done, yeah, I might have used the same colors. So, oh, there it is, 28 count, no, I don't want to show this thing, 28 count Laguna doubloon, that's 28 count doubloon in Lugana. Laguna, Lugana. My next one is, nothing is impossible. Now, some of these are from Just Cross Stitch Ornament Issues, I was doing a ornament, an Orna Mania for 2020, doing ornament starts. That was a complete flop for me, but I did get some started and some finished. Um, and I don't know which year this is from. So I don't know if I have it on my phone. I probably don't, because I don't think I was that good. Um, let me see. Nope, it's by the designer is my big toe. Um, that's who the designer was, but I didn't put what issue that this came out of what year. But this is the this is the finish, just a little ornament, and it says "For with God nothing is impossible." And I started and finished it in the same day, so it was five eight twenty twenty. And the next one is my other snowman one, which is, I don't need that there, Cricut Collection. It was out of this book, which is Wool and Mittens. And I did this snowman down here. And this is stitched on a piece of mystery linen. I'm sure I probably did it. Where's my other kitten mitten? I don't see what I did that one on either. I'm going to have to figure that out because I want them to all be the same size. But there he is. I feel like he's missing something. Oh, he is. He's, mitten. he's missing his buttons down the front. I need to find three little black buttons to put on him. That's what he's missing. But he's adorable. My next one is also out of Just Cross Stitch Magazine, and this was a Britter Cup design called Poinsettia. And there's the finish. And this one, I also don't know what the fabric is. It's a mystery fabric, but I did do it. I started it on May 6th, and I finished on May 23rd. And I used the call for colors, which were, um, this is Cinder. This is Gasp Cinder, and I think this one's called Shutters. And then it's got a couple of beads up here. So you can see I have some ornament finishing to do as well. 
My next one, oh, how did I miss that? I skipped one. I skipped my spring hair. I don't know how I did that. Um, this is a design that was in the Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher Summer, or not Summer, Spring 2020 issue. It is by Cecilia Turner, and it was called Spring Hair Etching. And there, I had it done in one day, which was 329 to 329. And it's so cute. And this fabric was hand by, dyed by me. And I'm not sure what counts. Let me see. Yep, 32 counts fabric. And this was my finish. And I was just so impressed with myself over this piece. It just came out perfect. This is so firm. And you flip it, and then it's got a little bunny scene on the back. So very, very pleased with this finish and chose my own colors for the design. Let's see, did I miss anything else? I don't think so. Spring hair, got that 329. Okay, got that. Okay, so the next one is out of Blackbird Designs, The Bells on Christmas Day. And what I did was, let's see if I can pull up the bigger picture here. There we go. I did this here, which is the Unbroken Song. And I have to say, painting this box was not fun. Not at all, because the glass doesn't come out of it. So you, you had to tape off the glass in order to paint the box. And it just wasn't thrilled with it, but I'm glad that it's done. So. Hold on, I'm going to take something out of the box that's not supposed to, so you can see the design. Get that out of there. Okay. So this is it right here. There it is. So sorry about the glare. But it is so adorable. This is a 36 count linen that was hand dyed by Rolando. She's on Etsy. I'm sure that's what it was. Yep, 36 count linen. I started it on May 1st. May. I started it on January 31st, 2020. I finished it on May 10th, 2020. Now this originally was supposed to be the um, my gift exchange for um, StitchCon. But things just didn't work out. I had to cancel StitchCon uh, with everything going on. And so I ended up doing it and finishing it and keeping it myself. And you can see the box is all done. And I have one little lone strawberry that hangs in this box <laughs> that I made that is still not finished totally. It's sitting here. So that goes in my box. That's where that sits. Beautiful piece, glad to have it done. I have two more boxes. I may try another one. I have the other design that I want to do, which is, I believe that peace one, also fixed in that box. Yeah, this one here also fix, fits, fits in the box. So I may do this design here and put it in the box as well. Okay, on to the next finish, which is Long may she wave, and of course I forgot that across the room, so give me a second. How did I know I was going to do that and forget to bring this over here? So, long may she wave. <laughs> long may she wave. From Little House Needleworks. This was a three-part series that was like you could do it all together or whatever you wanted to do. So that's one of them. And then the second one, Home of the Brave. And then there's a third one that I stitched before this. And they are stitched on 32 count helix, which I believe is picture this plus. And I found this sign, this board, over at Hobby Lobby during the patriotic during 4th of July, and I put all three of them on here, and I absolutely love it. So you're going to see all three. So there's the board. 
with all three pieces on it. And those are my finishes. So they are permanently affixed to this board. And I think they were just gorgeous. I picked my own colors on the floss because I didn't like the muted color. So I chose more bold and bright colors. And I think it's just love it. This hangs in my living room. I have a patriotic wall, which I haven't put back up yet, which hopefully I will get to. We're painting in the next week, and then I'm going to put my patriotic wall back up again. But they're all done in Helix. It's 32 count. It is um, my own color conversion. I couldn't tell you what colors I used because I didn't save it. So those were done. The next one is Prairie Schoolers Evergreen. And this was stitched on 28 count Monaco that I hand dyed myself. Sorry about the glare. And I did mine differently because I did not want to do a wall hanging. I wanted to do it as a pillow. And I had seen someone who had done it as a pillow and I absolutely loved it. And so that's what my plan was to make this as a pillow. So it's 28 count Monaco and I changed up, did I change up any of the colors? I may not have changed any of the colors. I'm looking, hold on. I did, nope, I left everything red and white. Yep, I didn't change any of the colors up. And this is where I'm at with this. That was my finish. I barely got enough here to make the pillow. I was going to put on the bottom um, some writing, but I haven't decided that I'm gonna do that. I may leave it just like this because I wanted it more of a winter pillow than a Christmas pillow. So I may just leave it like this and just make it into a pillow. But just adore, I love Prairie Schooler. Who doesn't love Prairie Schooler? Yes, it's blocks of color, but it is timeless and it is classic. It is just a classic design and it is so wonderful. Love Prairie Schooler. The next one is out of this book. Did I miss America the Beautiful? I did. I don't know how I'm missing one, so let me back up. This was a pattern called America the Beautiful, and it was loaned to me by um, Patricia Geary. She's on a Facebook group called uh, Blackbird Designs, something or other. I can't remember off the top of my head. And she loaned me this chart. I was so thrilled to get to stitch it. This design was stitched. Uh, where is it? Hold on. It is 40 count lakeside linens called Flagstone. It's my own color conversion. I started it on March 25th, 2020. I finished it June 26, 2020, and it is totally framed. And there it is. And just a beautiful piece. I was so thrilled to be able to get a chance to stitch this. There are so many others that I would like to get on loan and be able to stitch. I'm gonna to have to see what else is available to see who wants to loan me a pattern because some of these patterns, you can't get them anymore. They're just impossible. And so this one was really awesome that I was able to get it on loan and get it finished. But it is just beautiful. Again, hangs on my patriotic wall. Okay, did I miss anything else? I don't think so. Okay, so the next one is out of this booklet, The Best of Renato Perlin. I was excited to get this off of eBay, not eBay, Amazon for under $20. And I certainly alerted many stitchers about the book so they could run and get their copy as well. Several did. And I stitched one of the designs out of this book which is this design. I don't want to bend that like that. We're going to do it like this, which is this design right here, the squirrels. And I did that on a piece of, it is, mo no, it's not. It's, is it Monica? No, it's linen. And it was hand dyed by me though. This is a piece of linen that I hand dyed myself and I found this frame and thought it looked absolutely gorgeous in this particular frame that I got from a thrift store. And I believe the color of the floss that I used was BMC 498. And there it is. And I thought that frame looked so pretty with it. So 
definitely want to do some more designs out of his book because he has got some awesome designs in here. The cover, love the owls. You can see some on the back here. He's got one of the trees, florals. Um, you can see there's owls there, more trees. And let's see, here's a few more of them. Just beautiful designs. And in here, he also they also show other books that are available that I have been trying to hunt down because I love this. Love this. Love, love, love this. So, okay. My next one is Land That I Love. This is from Lizzie Kate. Just a little snippet. And I did it on 32 count. I'm looking... 32 count natural linen and this one I have FFO'd as well. It goes on my patriotic wall and I think I got the pattern secondhand because there was a charm with this but I did not get the charm because someone gifted me the pattern so I had to find my own charm to go on it but this is it here. I don't know if I'm holding that crooked or what and you can see I put you see if you can see the little charm it's a tree of life charm so that's what I hung off the house. So cute design, perfect frame from Hobby Lobby, got it 50% off, it was a good choice for this. And I started that on 5 9 20, and I finished it on 8 4 20, 20. My next design is also a Lizzie Kate, it is Liberty Sam. That's him right there. This was the original kit that came out with him with all the little accessories. I had collected all these little kits and I honestly don't know what this fabric is. My mom, take that back. It is 32 count, it says it right on the back, 32 count Confederate gray Belfast linen. So that's what it is. And I have not got him fully finished yet, but I need to because I love these stand-ups. So he was started on 4th of July in 2020, and I finished him on August 14th. And there he is. Now he just needs all his little embellishments and get on his stand-up form, and he'll be all set. He is a beautiful, beautiful Uncle Sam. And I'm almost sure I might have changed the colors on this. Let me see. It does not say... Not included, the Weekster Works, Americana, I used that. I used Americana, white wash. I think I used white, I didn't use white wash. And then Turkish red, which I don't think I used Turkish red, I used some other red that was brighter. So, but there he is again. So now I have two stand-ups completed and I need to get them finished. My next one is the Candy Elf. This is from Fancy That. I've shown the before that I have the series of elves and I wanted to get busy working on them. So I chose the Candy Elf to be first. And there he is. And on this one, I changed all the colors. I chose all my own colors on this. He is done on 36 count flax linen. I was trying to make him smaller because I wanted them to be with Santa. When I finished my um, Needle Nick, I wanted these to be with Needle Nick and them to be shorter because they're elves. So I wanted them to look like little elves. So I did him on a 36 count linen and all my own colors. And he is just too stinking cute. There he is. So that makes three stand-ups that I need to get done. Again, just cute, cute, cute. I think there's supposed to be a couple of buttons on each one of these. So I'm going to have to look like this one here has like a, it looks like, a, what is those called? Starlight mint button. So I, there's one and there's one down here. So I need to find some starlight mint buttons somewhere. Maybe I can find them on one, two, three stitch or something like that. We'll figure it out. Okay. The next one was a freebie from the work basket. If you go to the work basket site, you can find this. It's called Quaker Acorn. It's stitched on 32 count Claire, which is hand dyed by Stephanie. And there it is. 
I love acorns. I love anything fall related. So this really spoke to me and I needed to get it done. So I started this on 826. 2020 and I finished it 9-2, so September 2nd, 2020. And I still don't have it FFO'd yet. The next one is called Joy Wreath. Again, this was a freebie. Um, if you go to my floss tube number 49 in the show notes, you will find a link to this freebie pattern. It's called Joy Wreath. And it was done on the 32 count petty point. I love that bird. Isn't he just adorable? And he stitched up really fast. I think I did this in one day. Yep, September 16th to September 16th. I was able to complete this in one day. Haven't decided how I'm going to finish it yet. If I'm going to do it on a pillow, I probably will do it on a pillow. Or a stand up, one or the other. It'll be a pillow or a stand up. Oops, got threads hanging all over the place but just adorable. There he is. Okay, we're getting to the end here. The next one is The Lord's Blessing. This is from Imaginating and Diane Arthurs. And really love stitching on this one. Again, fall related, so it is what's something that I really love. And I was really impressed with the colors. I use the call for colors, but it does not look like that. It looks more... I think it's more muted than what the picture shows, which really makes it look nice. So you never know when you're looking at patterns and you're looking at the pictures, they really don't do things justice. Not everything looks like it looks in the pattern picture. So this Lord's Blessing is 32 count linen that I hand dyed myself. Um, and I started it twice. I started it on um, 36 count mellow. And for some reason, something happened, and I can't remember what it was. I think I dripped something on it. I can't remember. So I had to restart it. I ended up trying dyeing fabric one after another, try to imitate the mellow. I couldn't imitate it, but this spoke to me when I got to this particular one that I dyed, and that this is what it went on. So it is a 36 count, or I'm sorry, 32 count. And these are all the called for colors. And this is another one where I really need to get it matted and framed or just framed before Thanksgiving next year. And I did leave out the words on the bottom. And I didn't put the frame on it either. So let me go back for a minute. So when you look at this, you can see there's this zigzag frame around it and then words underneath give thanks. And I chose to leave those off because I felt like it was, I liked it better like this. So it came out just beautiful. Love it. Okay, so the next one is my big finish for this year that I've worked on for months and months and I was so pleased to get this done in time for Christmas, even though I didn't get it framed or anything, I was still thrilled to have it done. And this is Lavender and Laces, Santa of the Forest. And I put him on the board because I don't want him to wrinkle, but there he is. Now this is like a full coverage piece. Inside all Santa, he is just full coverage. But isn't he gorgeous? I love this pattern and it's so bright, vibrant and bright. And just, he just, mm -mm -mm. I just love him. So thrilled to have him done. He is going to hang over my fireplace at Christmas time next year. And I am thrilled with him. So I'm pleased as punch to have him completed this year or for 2020. So, and for that was not my last finish though. I did have, and I started him, mind you, Jan, no, July 11, 2019 is when I started him. I didn't finish him until December 21st of 2020. And I really didn't start focusing on him and making him a focus until it might have been June, maybe June, um, when uh, one of my Instagram friends, Kim Timmons, um, she was working on him as well. And we decided we were going to work on him together and get him done before Christmas. So we were really pushing each other, which was awesome because we were kind of holding each other accountable to get him done. She got hers done in time. I got mine done in time. 
And now we have a new start for January 1st, which I'll share in my next video, uh, which will be my regular update video. I will show that start on my new focus piece with Kim to get done before next Christmas. So very happy about having Santa the Forest done because he was one of my big pieces and I just wanted to get him done. My last finish is a design from Little Dove Designs. Yeah, Little Dove Designs on Etsy. It's called Merry Christmas. This is on 28 count Monaco that I hand dyed myself and it called for colors. And there it is. So really cute. It's got the little snowman going on, the reindeer, the angel singing, the Christmas bulbs, which I just love. Everything just really cute. Love this. And that was the wrap of my 2020 stitching. So 27 pieces was just awesome. I'm so glad I have going into this year, 2021. And let's see, for 2020, I did, let me think, I thought I wrote it on here. I'm carrying over 24 whips. 24 whips that I carry over. Two of them from 2017, three of them from 2018, four of them from 2019, and the rest are all 2020. I finished seven pieces that I carried over from previous years. I carried over 16 from 2019 to 2020. And now I'm up to 24 and I really would like to get back down to 12 to 14 whips total. So I have a lot of work to do and I keep adding to my whips because I had a new start for Christmas, which was needle neck, which you haven't seen yet. A new start for my birthday, which was the seven virtues from La Da, And then a new year's day start, which was the piece that I'm doing with Kim Timmons. So keep adding to my things. I need to start pulling them away, but I am so pleased with everything that's finished. Hopefully I can get some of the, I'm going to leave them out. Hopefully I can get some of these things fully finished. So when I shoot a video on one of my updates, I'll be able to show what I have fully finished. Not holding my breath for it because I don't know what I'm shooting my next video, but eventually I'll get them fully finished and show them off. So I want to thank everybody for stopping by and checking on me and asking to, not asking. <laughs> That's just, my mind just went, whew, went right over my own head. I want to thank everyone for stopping by to check out my finishes for 2020. And I look forward to um, 2021 and sharing my cross stitch with each and every one of you. Uh, I will do a whip parade for the beginning of 2020 and what I'm going, what I have currently, what I'm working on, what I'm not working on, what I need to work on. I have a one or two that I need to ditch and I have another one that I need to start over. So uh, I'll share those on another video because this is already 44 minutes long. So once again, thank you so much. I will see you in 2021 throughout the entire year and you guys have a blessed new year. Thank you so much. Bye.